Here, Sai. You wanna help me paint? You go. No, gently. Oh, uh, well, actually that's kinda cool. Yeah, buddy. Mm. Oh, beautiful Cyrus. Digging your tail technique? Oh, you done? All right, I'll take it from here, man. Thanks, here you go. Buddy, look what we made together. Oh, you like it? <laughs> I'm proud too. Good boy. Yes, it looks very nice. You should be proud. So we start with some crappy printer paper, sketch on your drawing, don't get too attached to it because then we scribble on the back of it and then tape and trace it onto watercolor paper. Doing this gets a nice light copy of your drawing with no harsh pencil marks. Then we'll trace the drawing in a light brown paint, maybe place some shadows. Next we'll put down some base coats for larger shadows or color shapes for bright colors to look good with watercolor, you really want a layer to deepen the color. Then I always begin with mapping out my shadows, watercolor is all about isolating the lights. Next, go in and do the detail work and put in more color where it belongs. I don't listen to Billie Eilish's music much, but I definitely enjoy her vibe, and she also seems like one of the way nicer celebrities, so I chose her to paint. If you guys want, I could do a giveaway with the painting, but definitely comment what celebrities you guys want to see me paint next. So to finish up, we're going to go over the darkest darks with black. Watercolor fades when it dries, and so making your shadows deeper like this will really bring your painting to life. And there you go. If you're new to watercolor or even if you've been watercoloring for a while, there's one problem that you're probably running into and that is the roll. If you're choosing to paint edge to edge, you can try pinning it down with your fingers, but then you always end up getting fingerprints on the edge of your painting. I'm going to explain to you why this happens and how you can paint from edge to edge and avoid this. 
The reason the roll happens is because you have wet one side of the paper and that side of the paper only is absorbing water, which causes that side of the paper to expand. This is why any type of rolling or rippling happens as you're watercoloring, because the paper is constantly expanding and contracting at different rates. In order to avoid this, all you have to do is wet your paper entirely, flip it over, and then wet the other side as well. Doing this ensures that both sides of the paper are expanding at the same rate, keeping your paper from rolling. Happy painting! We love to support small artists, so if you are a small artist, use this sound and show off your art. And anyone who's scrolling through their For You page and you find this beautiful art and you love it, if you want to support this artist, one of the best things you can do is click share and then copy link and it'll really help them in the algorithm. Hi! Today I'm crushing up the shade Artistry from the James Charles palette to make watercolor paint out of. This series has brought a lot of attention to my TikTok page really fast. James Charles himself has even seen one of these videos, which kind of blows my mind. But I would like to clear up a few questions and misconceptions I'm getting about this series. I make these videos making eyeshadow and watercolor paint mainly to recycle expired or old makeup. I really hate seeing someone throw in an eyeshadow palette that has so much pigment left in it. So when my friend's James Charles palette expired and she wanted to get a new one, she offered me this one so I could reuse all the eyeshadow in it. So that way the pigment wouldn't go to waste. I don't make paint out of new eyeshadows just because I find it wasteful. Thank you guys so much for supporting this series. So keep your head up, princess, for your crown falls. Know these voices in your head will be your downfall. I know it gets so hard, but you don't got far to go. Keep your head up, princess, it's a long road. And the path leads right to where they won't go. I know it hurts right now, but I know you'll make it home. So keep your head up So keep your head up Hi guys, it's Julia. In today's video, I'll be showing you six super easy watercolor techniques. Let's get started. For the video's sake, I'm taping my paper into four sections. For this first technique, you're going to need watercolors, paintbrushes, and water. Get a flat brush like this, because we'll be doing the wet on wet technique. Cover your paper in a layer of water, then take some colors and put it on the water and it blends really nicely together and gives like very cool bleeding gradient. Technique number two is really handy when you need to fix a mistake or make clouds or something like that. When your watercolor paint is still wet, dab at it. It'll lift the color very easily. Next one is dry brushing. Take a dry brush and put it in some paint and it gives you a really cool like effect that you can use with, when making wood or anything. Number four, layering. Take any paint color and put it on top of another. It's a really useful effect. Number five, take a clean toothbrush and put it in some watercolor paint. Then flick the bristles of the toothbrush. You'll get a splattered paint look. Last technique is to put salt on top of wet watercolor. Looks so interesting when done. If you're new to watercolor, your palettes probably look something like this, or like this, or maybe that. I'm making this video to tell you guys about something that seems to be implied knowledge. Meaning that people don't tell you what or how to do things because they assume that it's basic knowledge that you already know. For me, it was tube watercolors. How do I use them? How do they work? What is the draw? Why are they cool? I had so many questions. And now that I know the things, I'm going to share my knowledge with you. You can squeeze out watercolors and use them wet. You can squeeze them into pans, save them for later, put them in a palette, and then re-wet them. You can squeeze out tiny bits to use into a palette, into a tin, and then all you have to do is spritz them with water or use a wet brush to bring them back to life. 
This is how you mix in water to a wet blob of paint. This is how you can rehydrate previously used colors on your palette. My favorite thing about two watercolors is the ease of being able to mix, rehydrate, reuse with